welcome to the Halloween episode of Haunted Talks, the official podcast of The Haunted Walk, offering thematic walking tours in Kingston, Ottawa, and Toronto, Ontario. My name is Jim Dean, I am the creative director, and I really appreciate you joining us for this special episode. It is undoubtedly our favorite time of the year, and we thought it might be fun to take you behind the scenes a little bit at the Haunted Walk as we prepare for our busiest Halloween weekend. It's a bit of a day in the life episode, and it's gonna feature the three members of our head office or management team. The first voice you're gonna hear is Paola, who is our communications and events coordinator, as she flies from Ottawa to Toronto to check in with our staff there, do a little marketing, even go on a few tours. The second voice is gonna be Glenn, our CEO and founder, as he is immediately faced with a crisis first thing in the morning, which can often happen at this time of year. And I will be on there as well as I carry out my marketing and operational tasks to make sure our customers are knowing about the tours and having a great time once they arrive. Our Halloween season does run until November 4th, so still lots of time uh, to get tickets and get out on a tour. We'd certainly love to see you. We have so many special events and and tours happening over the next week. I'm not going to get bogged down here and sharing all of them with you. You will hear about some of them throughout the episode, but I'd encourage you to jump on our website, hauntedwalk.com, to see all the Halloween shenanigans we have going on in Kingston, Ottawa, and Toronto. And also I'd encourage you to follow us social media-wise on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, all at Haunted Walk, as we're sharing a lot of photos and some great video that we're picking up throughout the season. Without further ado, let's go behind the scenes with the Haunted Walk, a day before the busiest weekend of the year. It's Paola here, it is 6.20 a.m. and I'm just getting started on my Toronto adventure today. I've now landed in Toronto and uh, I'm on the Up Express heading downtown and uh, a very special meeting for me uh, because my daughter lives in Toronto now and so uh, I'm hoping that we can get together for breakfast. Oh, here we go. Welcome on board the Union Pearson Express to Union Station. I can barely contain myself. Hello, ma belle. Hello. Oui, merci. Here I am making my way through Majors Hill Park on my way to work this morning. Uh, Really excited about the uh, coming weekend, our busiest weekend of the year, but uh, not going to lie, I'm also a little bit tired. (laughs) I've worked 10 days in a row now out of, uh, I think I figured out it'll be 24 days in total that I'll be working without a day off uh, through the Halloween season. So it is a lot of fun. It's definitely invigorating, which is a good thing because otherwise I don't think I'd make it through. The... uh, The weather's gorgeous. It's uh, really beautiful today in the park. There's leaves are all turning and uh, it's uh, just absolutely gorgeous weather. Uh, You know, not everything, uh, you can't guarantee what's gonna go right or go wrong when you're putting on a big event like our Halloween season, but uh, the weather is one thing that's absolutely gone right this year. (laughs) In stark contrast to last year, it's been absolutely gorgeous. So we're definitely very lucky with that. Anyway, I'm going to make my way on into our ticket office and check on things and just see. (laughs) Usually when I get in the morning, there's a few minor crises to be dealt with. And uh, don't imagine that today will be any different. We'll see what, uh, how everything's going there. Okay, I've just uh, arrived at the ticket office. Uh, I was uh, thinking that maybe there might be a crisis waiting for me when I got to the ticket office, but it actually uh, came up before I even arrived. So uh, on my way up, I can see there's a huge amount of construction going on uh, for an event that's coming up on Saturday. Um, We were told that it wasn't going to be done until Saturday morning, but it does seem like they've already started setting things up uh, this morning on Thursday, so uh, well ahead of schedule. It's definitely a little bit disruptive, but the good news is I think I've sorted out uh, most of the issues, but uh, I imagine Christine is probably, uh, the the Ottawa manager is probably going to be pretty stressed out about it since uh, that's probably what greeted her. So anyway, here I am just uh, 
uh, coming into the ticket office and uh, see Christina. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing okay. So I guess you saw a little bit of a surprise uh, when you came in this morning. It's temporary, right? <laughs> so yeah, they, I mean the big issue was they actually had cables across our doorway as well as a bunch of other things. It's, it's all for the unveiling of the Stanley Cup monument that's going to be happening on Saturday. Luckily before our tours are happening, but um, so it shouldn't be too disruptive. But um, the, uh, the construction seemed to be happening a lot earlier. So I spoke to the guys, uh, the cables that are lying across our doorway are going to be moved. How's, uh, how's it been going this morning? It's good. It's pretty busy. People calling in to get those last minute tickets for this weekend. Uh, we've got a busy day today. Aside from that, I got to get everything ready for our kids' Ghostbusters tour on Saturday. You excited about that? I am. It's the cutest tour we've ever done. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty darn cute having the little kids go and bust some ghosts at the old jail. But I uh, got a few things and then on Stranger Tales for tonight. So I think we're going to have a busy day. So hang in there. I'm going to drink my coffee. Just on my way into work now. It's a beautiful day, beautiful morning. Well, not quite the morning. When you work at the Haunted Walk, 2 p.m. in the afternoon, often feels like the morning, but we've got a big day ahead. We've got Stranger Tales tonight, uh, which is our interactive self-directed mystery. Going to be helping out with that. Got to shoot a little promo video this afternoon as well with Christine, as Glenn is presenting at the Ontario Tourism Summit uh, in early November talking about the uh, Employer of the Year Award we recently won. So a lot of things going on today, and I'm sure the regular chaos and last-minute excitement that's going on. But it's just such a huge change from last October when the weather really, really put a damper on things for us. In all three cities this year, the weather has been quite spectacular. And Friday, Saturday coming up are our big weekend, Friday and Saturday before Halloween weather looks great there as well so uh, we're very excited a little tired of course at this time of year I think everyone in the haunted walk is dragging a bit uh, but the adrenaline really picks up now as we'll see the biggest crowds and it is the best time of year for a tour the air is a little crisp the leaves have all started to turn and uh, certainly the best time of year for ghost stories so I've been a little under the weather the past week or so uh, but as they say the show must go on and we want this uh, not only to be our best received season ever, but obviously for our business sake, uh, you know, we want to have a very successful season as well. And I think we're well on that track. So now we just got to, we got to finish strong. As is Halloween tradition, making my way in, I'm going to stop at Tim Hortons for a coffee to bring to work. Now our Halloween season has been quite long this year. Our longest ever, in fact, September 29th. We started going through to November 4th. And the challenge I give myself is I start buying medium coffees and I see how long I can hold out before I go over to the largest. And needless to say, I've been drinking large coffees for quite a few weeks now. So we're continuing on in our afternoon of fun at uh, the Toronto office. I'm now with... It's Rowena. And you are... The Toronto manager. How's it been going for the Halloween season in Toronto? We've been having a lot of fun down here this year. Uh, we had, we're, we're doing Black Creek Pioneer Village again this year, and we had had so much fun last year, but then we added on the premium tours this year, which is super exciting for us because we're getting to include a few spots that we know have stories to them, but we couldn't include on the regular version of the tours. As we were talking about earlier, um, in Ottawa, we kind of have a debate sometimes. Which building are people most scared of? Is it the jail or is it the Bytown Museum? We have people who are terrified of the museum but can walk through the jail no problem, and vice versa. At Black Creek, do you have a building that really totally spooks you? I think it, it varies very much from guide to guide. And I think, again, like last year, everyone have been, would have been telling you the manse just based on the really? things that we had happening there. Okay. But we've had some spooky things happen at Berwick House. And there's a few guides who are afraid of one of the first buildings that we go to on the tour called Second House, which is uh, the one that we go into that's original to the site. Hey, Claire. Yeah? Come over here. <laughs> 
because I just saw you react. So this is this is our guide, Claire. Hi. Hi. How long have you been working with The Haunted Walk? This is my fourth Halloween season. Yay. Okay, second season at Black Creek? Yes. Now, do you have a building? Because you reacted when we, were st- when we were talking about some of these spooky buildings at Black Creek. Is there one that you're particularly afraid of? Can I pick all of them? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you totally no, can. No, uh, definitely seconding what Rowena was saying. Um, the Mance and Berwick House are probably my top two that I do not like going into. But one way or another, we're all agreed that that Black Creek is possibly the most active place that we've visited. Oh, Oh, absolutely. Totally. (laughs) Things happen to people almost every single night. We're there. I'm going to give a call to Kelly at the Diefen Bunker, who's our main point of contact there, for our incident at the bunker as zombie adventure tours this weekend. It is going to be fairly crazy. Let's see what she's got to say. Hey, Jim. How's it going? Busy, going quite quite busy. Just wanted to uh, to give you a shout and see how things are shaping up for this weekend. Uh, ticket sales are, are crazy. We virt- virtually sold out just a handful of tickets on Saturday. I'd say Sunday is about eighty percent sold out, and even um, even for the fourth, November fourth, uh, next Saturday is looking looking pretty strong as well. So one thing for oh, certain, awesome. we're gonna ha- we're gonna have a lot of people. <laughs> No doubt, we're waiting for a lot of people. <laughs> How are zombie numbers looking for uh, for Saturday and Sunday? For Saturday and Sunday of this week, we have I think about eighty five to a hundred ish zombies that will be hidden throughout the bunker. Oh my, uh, that's that that that's that's a lot of zombies. That's our most ever, that's a I think. Frightening number of zombies. <laughs> It is funny, though. I have heard from a few folks who went uh, the first week saying how shocked they were at the, at the pure volume of, of the undead walking around. So I think 100 is going to blow their minds. I think so, for sure. Despite the fact that they're supposed to be undead and sort of slow-moving, they're super energetic about the whole thing. Um, and just even, it just seems to be more of a community of zombies this year, which is just so nice to see. Would you, would you say a family of zombies? A family of zombies. Zombies of all ages. <laughs> all right. Well, that's awesome. I think we're, uh, we're we're good on our end. We do expect to sell out Saturday, so if anybody wants last minute tickets, they better grab them uh, today. ASAP. Yeah, we've uh, already put it. We've already put out a little post on our Facebook page today. Awesome. Um, so we'll be sure just to comment to make sure that we say scoop them up ASAP. Perfect. All righty. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you then uh, Saturday morning at the bunker. All right. Sounds great. All righty. Take care. Okay. Bye, Jim. Bye. All right, so Christine and I are heading down to the uh, tour guide dungeon, uh, which is located uh, near our ticket office, uh, where we have all of our stuff, as well as where the tour guides uh, get ready. We're just going to go and get stuff ready for the Ghostbusters Ain't Afraid of No Ghosts tour this weekend. We have to find all the strange items that... uh, uh, we use for that tour, so, but, uh, oh, and, uh, actually one of our guides is here, so, um, Haley's here, I guess you just, uh, finished a private tour this morning, I guess? Uh, yeah, it was a private original, really great group, yeah, good times. Very good, yeah, it's a little bit chillier now than it has been, but, uh, it's, uh, it's still beautiful weather, nice and sunny at least, so, not too bad, besides that cloak keeps you warm, right? Yeah, definitely, especially when your spine is tingling. Nice. <laughs> I like it. Christine and I are going to be finding all of the gear we need for the Ghostbusters tour, for the We Ain't Afraid of No Ghosts tour this weekend for the kiddies. Uh, let's see. I guess we're going to need to dig out some stuff. Now, I know one of the things uh, we have is a rigged up tour guide cloak yes. with the um, proton pack. Do you know where those are? I think I hid them in the back so huh. that no one would, you know... Be tempted to play with it. All right. I think I found just about everything. Christine's uh, still rooting around in the back. but uh, So they're not in the back. Oh, you know, I didn't check, check the bench. Ah, yay, treasure. Cool. One. All right, that's awesome. And it sounds like we have pretty much everything we need. Actually, it's funny. Last Halloween when we first started doing this tour, uh, I had to order a ton of weird stuff off of Amazon. It was so difficult to get uh, find various items for the Ghostbusters tour. But uh, it's kind of a Halloween tradition. I think the weirdest one I had to do was buying uh, five identical porcelain dolls that all look yeah. the same. from. And the woman that was selling them on through her internet site was so excited that I was passionate about her love of porcelain dolls. I, I couldn't break it to her that I actually 
actually really, really hate porcelain dolls. I find them like the creepiest thing on earth. So yeah, it's kind of a tradition around here. But um, all right, I think uh, we have everything we need. So I think that's one item checked off on our to-do list. So let's uh, get back to the phones. Let's call Jackson Kingston, shall we? All right, let's see. I hope she answers. <laughs> Me too. Haunted Walk of Kingston, Jack speaking. Hello, Jax. It's Paola and Rowena. Hey. Hi, friends. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> We're very good. Um, so, we wanted to check in with you and see how things are going in Kingston so far this Halloween season. Yeah, this Halloween season has been insane. It's been like record breaking for us. I was just crunching the numbers. And we had about, by this time of the year, 600 people last year. Yeah. We've had 1,100 people. Are oh, you serious? Walk. Yes. That, and that's just the downtown walk? That's just the downtown at Fort Fright where we're doing that small little attraction. We've had almost 2,000 people so far. Come on. Yeah. The numbers are insane this year. That's absolutely wonderful. Great to hear it. Yeah. And so what have you got coming up? Coming up, because on Friday the 13th, we had those premium tours, and they were so popular. They sold out before Friday the 13th, and we got such great reviews from them. We decided to add them again on Halloween night, so we have that coming up for Halloween. It should be quite fun. And how are the guides doing? Are they tired? (laughs) The guides, you know, they're a little tired, but mainly excited. They're very much in the Halloween spirit right now, enjoying the free candy I supply them. (laughs) Secret manager trick right there. Exactly. (laughs) Thank you for that update, Jax. It was great to chat with you and uh, tell everybody that uh, we're we're very proud of them for uh, the great performance they're putting on in Kingston right now. I'll let them all know. All right, so it's 6 p.m. now. Just finished wrapping up the video uh, for Glenn for the Ontario Tourism Summit starring uh, Christine from our Ottawa office. Got that out the door. Have about half an hour until the start of Stranger Tales begins at our ticket office on Spark Street in Ottawa. Hoping I can grab a quick bite to eat before I have to go down there. But we did just get a, uh, a big piece of news, a great media booking for us. On Halloween Day, we're going to be on CBC Radio on Ontario Today, so a province-wide show, uh, for a full hour. And people are going to be calling in with our ghost stories and chatting uh, with us. We've been on that show before, a couple of years ago, and it was a huge boost for us and getting the word out about our tours and what we're doing. So that's a fantastic piece of news here at the end of the day. Rowena, our manager from our Toronto office, is going to be on there. Uh, so Halloween Day, uh, make sure you got CBC on. You might, you might hear us on there. I'm going to go find something to eat. It's been a wonderful afternoon in Toronto. Uh, I've met a number of guides and uh, had lots of opportunities to take photos and chat and record. And now I'm rushing over to the distillery district because my colleague Margot is going to be giving a tour there, Ghosts and Spirits of the Distillery. So I'm really looking forward to that, but uh, I've got a ways to go and I'm walking pretty fast. Hello, Margot. <laughs> Hello. How are How you? Are, I'm good, thank you. you. Good, thank you. I'm recording this. Oh, what are you recording? Well, I'm recording us because we're doing a day in the life in Haunted Walk. So oh, okay. I'm so excited to see you. I'm very excited to see you. And I get to follow a tour with you in Toronto, which what? I've never done before. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking forward to okay, that. Okay, well, let me introduce you to the organizer. Then. Okay. I'm on my way to find Elise, who is playing one of our Stranger Tales characters tonight. But she also had a very early interview this morning, 7.15, I think, uh, in French. So I want to see how she survived that. Hi, Elise. Hi. Very curious how your early interview went this morning. Uh, I think I was coherent. I yeah. think I made sense. Uh, got everything across. I did wake up a bit, about 30 minutes, 45 minutes in advance just to wake the mouth up. Did like you have the a, brain up. Did you have a tour last night? Was it? Ah, uh, uh, yes, I did. So late tour, early morning. Absolutely. We well, appreciate the dedication. Yeah. <laughs> what, what kinds of questions were they asking you? Uh, wanted to know about the bunker, the um, 
Diefenbunker experience and about the tours in general and if kids should come on the tour or not. Ooh. Yeah. It really depends, doesn't Always it? a tricky question. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I appreciate you doing that uh, Stranger Tales. Just, I, I can't say where we are right now. You're one of our hidden it locations. It is an undisclosed location, uh, yes. But you're all set up and, and ready to go here? Absolutely. Awesome. I think the first groups will be arriving in maybe five, ten minutes. And I look forward to seeing them. All right, have fun. <laughs> Thank you. I'm checking in again. It's about uh, 8.20 and I'm about to do my second tour of the day. One of the great things about this company is the friendships that uh, we create. And uh, over, the, over the time that you work with people, you uh, foster great working relationships, but it doesn't take long that uh, you become great friends as well. So it was wonderful to see folks like Margot and head over to the Royal Ontario Museum. This is where I'm waiting now for the start of the Ghosts of the University of Toronto. As I've been doing my Stranger Tales role tonight, my character. I'm in a, a secret location where I've been able to see uh, three or four of our original Haunted Walk groups go by. And, you know, once you work in the head office of the Haunted Walk, you don't have that much opportunity to be out on tour yourself telling the stories. And at this time of year, I don't know, I find I, I, find I miss it for sure. But it is exceptionally rewarding to see, you know, three or four of our, our, our guides come through here each of them telling the story I'm at, the location I'm at, you know, just beautifully in their own way and in their own style. And, you know, that's got to be one of my favorite parts of the job is seeing our tour guides develop and just what each one of them can bring to the table. And, you know, we're thankful for all of them and their hard work at this time of year. So it's great to be able to kind of be out here incognito and see them in action. It's now midnight, and uh, I'm at my hotel, getting ready for bed. It's been a jam-packed day. I got up at 5 a.m., and uh, I've been just going ever since. I did mention earlier that I'd been doing a lot of walking, so I just checked the result of my day, the number of steps I took uh, on my pedometer. It was 29,159. One of the highlights for me was definitely following the uh, University of Toronto tour. Um, it's not one that we offer year-round, so I was really looking forward to getting the opportunity to take part during our Halloween season. It's something special that we do at this time of the year, and uh, so I, I was very, uh, very happy to uh, take part, discover that beautiful area, the, the campus of the University of Toronto. We had something that was pretty extraordinary that happened. Throughout the tour, I was hearing one of the participants talk to her friends about this red brick building that she knew, and it was in the area. And uh, eventually, as we were walking together, we got, to, we got to talking, and suddenly she became very animated because she spotted the red brick building in question. So I'm going to let Nika take it over from here. Um, she's going to tell the story of her experience one day as she was walking by the Christie Mansion. So I actually uh, used to live in this area maybe about six or seven years ago and I uh, passed by this building coming from work and I just stopped to look at it and I felt really, really sad. So I was basically standing there across the street from this building looking at it and crying and I couldn't figure out why. I had no idea what happened there. I had no history to, uh, to associate it with. And I wasn't feeling particularly sad that day either. The moment I walked away from it, I was feeling perfectly fine. Literally just down the street, that, that was, everything was great. Um, only now, while we were pulling out towards the building to just kind of talk about it, was I a little bit excited to find out what actually happened here. And I was listening for something that might have given me an indication. Yes. Um, and when she mentioned that there was a mistress um, that was forgotten and left um, enclosed in a space there, and then eventually ended up committing suicide, that kind of, I don't know, I was, I was really surprised to find out that, hey, maybe that's, you know, that's kind of what caused it. Maybe that's what I was feeling. It's a great night. Everyone was in great spirits. Looking forward to the weekend to come. Looking forward to calling it a day as well. Resting up for the big weekend. Uh, but I did just get some interesting surveillance footage from the Bytown Museum where we run our 150 years of Canada's scariest stories during the Halloween season. 
And a group there was up in the middle of one of the, the great stories we tell there when all of a sudden there was a sound from the other side of the room and the entire group jumped. One guy looked like he was about ready to fight a ghost. Uh, so I think before I go to bed, I'm going to post that on Facebook because it is too delightful not to share. I think that's it for now. Happy Halloween, everyone. All right, just wrapping up my day here uh, down at the final haunted location at uh, Stranger Tales. I would uh, tell you where we are, but uh, then I'd have to kill you because it's a closely guarded secret. But it is one of our haunted buildings here in Ottawa. Uh, it's been a great night. We've had a lot of fun groups, people coming through uh, the building, getting very creeped out, enjoying following the clues. And uh, I certainly have enjoyed my role of being a creepy gatekeeper. It's, uh, it's definitely very satisfying. I'm actually kind of a huge chicken, but I really enjoy scaring other people. So I don't know if that makes me a bad person, but certainly makes me right for this job. Anyway, that's uh, another uh, another long day in Halloween, but a lot of fun. I'd say the most uh, difficult thing after uh, a day of doing this is honestly is just going to sleep because you're too fired up with uh, energy from all the uh, all the fun that we get to have. But uh, anyway, I hope everybody uh, has a great Halloween and uh, hope you've enjoyed listening to a little bit of our day behind the scenes. I hope you enjoyed our behind-the-scenes look at The Haunted Walk. If you did enjoy this kind of episode, I'd love to hear some feedback from you on it. Please feel free to reach out to us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, all at Haunted Walk. A very special thank you to Paula and Glenn for participating and recording their day. Thank you to Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com for the additional music. Special thank you as well to Michelle Dennis, our audio editor, who managed to turn around this episode in less than 24 hours. A huge thank you to our wonderful tour guides who are working their butts off right now. We love you, and we're looking forward to a big party after November 4th. And most importantly, thank you to all of you out there who listen to the show and come out on the tours and support us. Without your patronage, we would not be able to do what we love. So thank you so much for that. If you did want to put a little extra treat in our Halloween bag this year, a five-star review for the podcast, wherever you're listening to us, would certainly be very appreciated. Information about all our tours can be found on our website, hauntedwalk.com. Until we meet again, happy Halloween and sweet dreams. Sweet dreams.